from Milpitas, California, at the edge of Silicon Valley, it's The Cube, covering autonomous vehicles. Brought to you by Western Digital. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in Milpitas, California at Western Digital offices for the Auto Tech Council Autonomous Vehicle Meetup. About 300 people, a lot of conversations about the not thousands, but millions of problems that have to be solved before we get autonomous vehicles on the road. But there's so many angles to this whole story besides just kind of what you think of as just an Uber and a self-driving taxi or even a self-driving car for your personal use. And it's a really cool startup here that's actually celebrating their 100th round trip transaction. We're excited to have have Daniel Laurie, he's the CEO and Chief Product Officer of UW. Great to see you. Nice to meet you, Jeff. So you just came off your, your keynote presentation and you were showing a great highlight movie of your product, so tell the folks, what are you guys all about? We are uh, the first uh, public road enabled autonomous driving delivery company. And uh, this is, uh, our aim is to cut the cost of last mile deliveries in half and to make uh, deliveries easier, more convenient for consumers, more ubiquitous, uh, faster, and, uh, and cheaper, of course. So it's pretty interesting. So the, the use case that you're doing now is you're in San Mateo and you're delivering groceries from Draegers to the neighborhood. Yes, we actually now have four customers. Oh, you have four, uh, okay. Yes, in a matter of a month, uh, we gained three more after Draegers. Uh, Draegers was our first customer. We've been working with them for the last six months uh, to find the, you know, the best uh, cargo space, the way to um, organize the compartments and everything. And uh, it's been a fantastic partnership. And so. So uh, they, were, uh, they were our first customer and we're doing deliveries for them almost on a daily basis. Um, and then we added three customers. As, as people were seeing this orange vehicle in the streets, uh, they started calling us and they say, hey, can I do it? So now we have a florist at a Burlingame and a, a couple of restaurants as well. And how many of these vehicles do you have on the road? So for now we have one of them. Okay. Uh, we are getting our second one uh, next week. Um, there is a third one uh, that is going to be ready in about four weeks from today, and then we have a production ramp up from there. So what are some of the unique challenges in creating this vehicle and delivering the service that, that people probably never thought of? Right, and it's, uh, it's um, in our case, uh, first of all, we're, uh, we're not a science project, we're a real business case. Uh, probably one of the first ones in the autonomous driving world. And for us to solve this business case, it's not just about autonomous driving, it's also to have a best customer experience. And so um, we're not just doing autonomous driving, we're doing a bunch of things. Uh, we're building a, a cargo space, uh, that's mechanical engineering that is adapted, which is basically a system of compartments or lockers and wheels, if you want. Um, the second thing is we are building apps on the merchant side and the customer side. Uh, third thing is on uh, the autonomy um, side of things, we're doing something that very few other companies are doing, which is uh, mastering the first and last hundred feet. Slow motion, high precision, one to two centimeter accuracies to to be able to maneuver in parking lots, uh, be able to back up in driveways and, and things like that. Nobody else is doing really uh, that kind of thing. And the last thing uh, which, is, which we're doing, and uh, we're probably one of the world's uh, most advanced companies in doing this, is teleoperations. Um, we have to be able to uh, take control of the vehicle, first of all, monitor the fleet, and second, take control of the vehicle in case of a special situation. And we're doing this with an ultra low latency, less than 200 milliseconds between the image we receive from the truck and what the the command that we're, we, we're, we're giving back, which allows us to actually drive the vehicle right, in, right. The, in the streets as if it was a video game, but it's the reality. Right, no, we did a piece with Phantom Auto. I don't know if you know Phantom. Oh, we were doing kind of a general purpose yes, a version of that same yes, capability. Yes. It's really, really exactly. amazing. Frankly, I think that uh, autonomous driving is going to need that capability for at least the next decade. Right. So the, the last hundred feet is interesting. You know, I went to a Ford Smart Cities event a little while ago and they talked about kind of curb management. Because when you have all these kind of fleet vehicles getting people in and out, making deliveries in and out, kind of the curb and that interchange of the curb is really a tricky thing. It takes a lot of nuance, you know, know when to double park, can you double park, should you double park, can you, as you said, get into a driveway. So when you, what's your ideal scenario when you do do a grocery drop off? Are you trying to get into the driveway, get off the double parking situation? Yes, absolutely. This is a critical 
critical part of what we're doing. And uh, parking lots are actually lawless uh, places. <laughs> you see cops everywhere, but you don't see them in parking lots. So you have people backing up from spot, uh, children pushing carts, uh, pets, you know, you name it. Uh, so those are very, very complex situations. Uh, and uh, mastering those situations is super important for us because we, of course, our vehicle is going to park on those in, in those parking lots to pick up the, the, the goods and potentially to deliver. So we um, uh, developed a, an AI stack, artificial intelligence stack, that starts with a scene estimator. We estimate the scene to see where, what, what, um, what uh, um, uh, spots are available, or if it's a driveway, if you have cars parked in the curb, and, uh, and then be able to actually maneuver in that spot. Right, so, but you, you're writing off a lot. So you're doing the apps, you're doing all the infrastructure with your partners, you're doing the, the complexity of the vehicle, and then you've got, you got to worry about perishable goods. You're, you're taking milk as well as, as yes. warm stuff. So a lot to chew. How big is your team? Kind of where are you in your development as a company? Yes, we're about 30 people uh, right now, and uh, we are going to grow this team quite significantly by uh, probably double the size of the team this year. Um, it's a very ambitious project. It's a very ambitious company. And uh, yes, at, uh, you know, as Elon Musk puts, puts it, uh, success is one of the possibilities, one of the possible outcomes, right. but not necessarily the likeliest, right. but we're, we're, we're doing that race, we're in that race. So uh, just before we wrap, I want to talk a little bit about the human factors, because um, there's a lot of conversation earlier in some of the keynotes about trust and no trust, and on, on one hand, people don't trust these things. They said that, you know, the, they showed the survey, I don't trust them. On the other hand, we see people in autonomous vehicles as if they were level five, right? They're sleeping and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. When you inter engage with customers, um, what are some of the reactions on kind of the trust or not trust? How do they respond to this truck driving up uh, and they walk out and pull their groceries out? That, that's, a, that's a great question. But um, in, in our case, we're in a very different situation than all the ride sharing and passenger uh, vehicles because we don't, by definition, we don't carry passengers. So they only interact with the truck in the sense that uh, they have to retrieve their goods. That's the only thing they do. And uh, so they look at this a lot more favorably than, uh, because it doesn't, they don't have that uh, sense of danger uh, from, uh, from, from the vehicle. Um, it's actually more like a, wow, this is so interesting, and now I'm getting my deliveries, I know exactly it's gonna be 16 minutes, and uh, I get my push notification four minutes before it gets there, and then it's a simple, very, very simple way of doing things. It also will um, uh, be very, very convenient for returning goods. Uh, you will be able to summon the vehicle to your doorstep, you put it into a locker, it goes for you at the UPS, it takes a minute to do right, it. Right. Uh, so uh, people love the service, uh, the reaction has been overwhelmingly positive, and it's a far less dangerous uh, thing to do uh, than uh, having passengers. Right. Yeah, the first time I saw the, the, the video of it, I, that's my first thought was Amazon Locker, which is you know yes. such a convenient way to interact. And, and so importantly, as we move to smart cities, because what you don't want is the, is the proverbial sticker on your door that you miss the delivery. Right. Like, ah, oh, rat. So yeah. this is such an important part of the enablement of smart cities. So really, really cool story. Mm -hmm. All right, Daniel. So last word, what, getting excited. Next, going to get out of individual company relationships and start to more have a generic service that people can tap into? Yes, uh, I, uh, we, we're, we're tremendously excited about the future of this company. Within uh, two or three weeks from having launched a product on January 30th, uh, we've had, we received phone calls from uh, every large retailer, you name it, in the world um, uh, wanting to do business with us. So it's a very, very exciting start. <laughs> All right, Dan, we'll keep an eye. Thank you so much, Thanks Jeff. for stopping by. All right, he's Dan, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're at the Auto Tech Council Autonomous Vehicle Event in Milpitas, California. Thanks for watching, catch you next time.